NTLM v2, otherwise known as Net NTLM v2, is an authentication protocol used by Windows. To put it very simply, a client wants to access a server. The server sends the client a challenge, which the client should then encrypt with their password to prove they are who they say they are. From an attacker's perspective, this encrypted challenge is well worth trying to capture because it can be cracked to retrieve the original password. In this video, I will be demonstrating three different ways that attackers can capture this hash and what they can do to crack it and retrieve the original password. Although I'm only showing three ways in this video, there are many, many ways for attackers to trick Windows into sending an NTLM v2 hash. But they all work basically the same way, and that is getting a service to try and read a file which is hosted on an SMB server under the attacker's control. This can be done very easily with tools such as Responder, which listen on port 445 for authentication requests, and then prints out any of the hashes that are sent from clients. So, first things first, let's get Responder up and running so that we can capture some hashes. Responder comes pre-installed on some Linux distributions, such as Kali, as I'm running right now. But if you don't have it installed, then don't worry, it's very simple to do so. Let's move into temp for this. We're going to clone the GitHub repository, which is github.com slash lgandix slash responder. And once that's downloaded, we can enter the folder. We're going to use pip to install all the requirements. Install our requirements. Once we're sure we have all the required dependencies installed on our system, we want to find out what our um, internet interfaces are called. For the purposes of this video, I will be using f0. So we want to run responder like this, responder.py dash capital I, and then the name of the interface we're using, so f0. So now, Responder will be listening on this interface on SMB, HTTP, HTTPS, all these servers for authentication requests. Once it receives one, the hash will be printed out here below. With Responder listening, we can move on to leaking hashes. The first technique I'm going to be sharing in this video is abusing a local file inclusion vulnerability. On my Windows VM, I'm hosting the following PHP file which is vulnerable to LFI. If path is set and it's not empty, then PHP goes ahead and includes it. But how can we abuse it to leak NTLM hashes? Well, let me show you. We're gonna open up Firefox, go to the website, and <coughs> PHP's include function will resolve UNC paths, so we can supply the following payload to have it authenticate against our fictional SMB server. We're going to do the IP address of our Kali machine, which is this, and then some path. And so it's going to try and include the file from our SMB server, which is hosted on our Kali machine. And if we check our terminal, we will find an NTLMv2 hash in responders output. One interesting thing to keep in mind with this attack is that PHP does not need allow URL include or allow URL f open to be enabled as some other remote file inclusion attacks do. As you can see, I have the default values f open is enabled and include is disabled. However, it still tried to resolve the UNC path and resulted in the NTLM hash being leaked. The second technique that I'd like to share is another web-based one, and that is exploiting an SQL injection vulnerability to leak the NTLM v2 hash. Uh, let me go ahead and restart Responder. And so this is the source of the website. We can see the UID parameter. If it's set and if it's not empty, the server will make a connection to TestDB hosted on this computer, Microsoft SQL. And it tries to select all from users where ID equals and then get UID. And this is a clear SQL injection vulnerability because it's simply concatted without any filtering or anything like that. So, if we do this, we can see the SQL query which is being run. Select all from users where ID equals one. And in Microsoft SQL, there's a built-in function named XP underscore deer tree, which can be used to authenticate against an SMB server and list out all the files. Of course, in our situation, we don't really care about the list. We just want the server to do the authentication part so that it'll leak the NTLM hash to us. Our payload will therefore look like this. 
we're going to break out of the quotes and the query and then we're executing master dot dot xp dir tree and then the unc path of our smb server and then some file and then one one semicolon and then comments to break the query we'll send it this is the query that was executed and if we check Kali we have the hash which is not being printed because it was previously captured but we got it one thing to note is that this attack is not specific to Microsoft SQL other databases such as MySQL have other functionalities which you can abuse to resolve UNC paths and leak NTLM hashes. Of course, the syntax looks different, it just depends on which database you're attacking. I'd like to share one final technique to leak NTLM hashes, and that is creating a malicious LNK file, which will automatically authenticate against our server anytime a user browses to the folder containing the file. This can be an extremely effective way to farm NTLM v2 hashes, for example, if you have write access to a public network share which many users access. Creating this LNK file is quite simple. Here's how you can do it in PowerShell. Let me go ahead and close Firefox, close this. So let's go ahead and launch PowerShell. And let me zoom it in a bit so you guys can see. And this is what we're gonna do. So object shell equals new object dash com shell, com object, wscript.shell. Next we do lnk equals obshell dot create shortcut and then we're giving the path for our shortcut so let me do it in windows tasks leak dot lnk and then we do lnk dot target path which is the target of the link uh, it doesn't really matter i'll just do google.com and then is the interesting part so Icon location equals our SMB server leak.ico. And then we do lnk.safe. So let me just explain this really quickly. So the target is going to Google. We don't really care about that, but the icon is set to a fictional file which is on our server, right? The thing is, when a user uses Explorer and opens up some folder, lnk files, if they have an icon set, they will try to automatically download this icon and display it. So a user enters the folder, Explorer sees this is the icon for this link, and it tries to download it, which leads to it authenticating against our SMB server and leaking the hash, right? We can simulate a user browsing to this folder by just doing it manually. So it was in C Windows Tasks, C Windows Tasks. It should have tried to retrieve the icon file from our server. We can check Kali and we will see the hash has shown up many times. It's quite simple, but very effective. So far, I've shown you three ways to leak NTLM v2 hashes, but what do you do with them? Well, if the user whose hash you've captured set a weak password, then it may be possible to crack it. For the purposes of this video, Bill has unfortunately used a password which appears in rockyou.txt and can be cracked therefore very easily. We can crack it using hashcat like this. So let me just capture, uh, let me just copy this hash, close responder, and it's gonna be hashcat in mode 5600 for net NTLM v2. We'll paste in the hash, and then we're gonna use, in this case, rock you. We just run that, and very quickly we can see the hash was cracked. The password is bill, which is, yeah, not a great password. With the password cracked, we can verify that it's legit using crack map exec like this. So SMB 192.168.0.192, which is the IP of the Windows VM. User bill, password bill. It will try to authenticate and we can see it succeeded. So the password was correct. That's it for this video. I hope you learned something new and I do hope I'll see you in the next one.